Welcome back, computer science students. Today we're going to be focusing on part two of this maze mini project. And the goal of the project today is to create a winning and losing scenario for this game. So before you get started on part two of this project, please make sure that you've completed part one, and that way you can actually play the game and either win or lose the game. Remember that part one asks you to Make sure that you can control this Pikachu with the up, down, right, and left arrow keys. So you should be able to move your character around the maze like this. You should also be able to turn your character if you hit the space key. And finally, you should be able to switch Pikachu's costumes when you click on Pikachu, like that. If you have those six things done from yesterday, then you are ready to move on today. If not, just pause this video, finish up the work from yesterday, and then you can hit play again. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to set up two new backgrounds that say you win and you lose. In order to do that, let's make our way to the stage. Click on backdrops. I'm going to select paint a new background. And I'm just going to use this text feature right here to type you win. You are more than welcome to decorate this and make it your own. Right now, I'm just going to make this text appear big and put it right there in the middle. Let's call this you win. Let's do the same thing, but instead now let's make a you lose background. So let's call this background you lose. Let's use the text feature again. This time I'm going to make the text red for dramatic effect. Okay, I'm going to click there and I'm going to type you lose. Let's make this big and bold as well. Great. So now we have a you win and a you lose screen. Back in the code, so I'm going to click back on the Pikachu sprite. I'm going to bring in a when green flag is clicked block. All right, and now it's time to learn about a very important block that helps us control the flow of our game, meaning it helps us control if someone is losing or if someone is winning. This block is called if then. It's right here in the control category. Go ahead and drag an if then block in. Notice that there's a gap right here. That gap means that we need to tell the if then block what condition to look out for. In this case, we want Pikachu to lose any time Pikachu touches one of the black lines of the maze. So, we're also going to learn about the sensing category today. Go ahead and click on the sensing category and look for the block that says touching color blank. Let's go ahead and bring this block in and drop it right there in the blank space so that this reads, if touching color blank, then. And the color that I wanted to touch is one of these black lines. Notice that I used this color picker tool here. And then I clicked on one of the lines of the maze to grab the shade of black. Great, so now this block says, if touching the color black, then, we want to switch the background to say, you lose. In looks, I'm going to grab the switch backdrop block, and it already says you lose. We're almost done with this part. Now, remember that computers read code from top to bottom? So right now what's going to happen is the computer is going to read this code, and it's going to say, okay, when the green flag is clicked, if Pikachu is touching the color black, then switch backdrop to you lose. But it finishes reading this once, and once it's done reading it once, it's never going to look back at it unless we use a loop block. In this case, we always want the computer to be checking this. And that means we need to use a forever block around it. There. So now this says, when the green flag is clicked, the code should always be checking if Pikachu is touching their color black. And if Pikachu is touching their color black, then we want to switch the backdrop to you lose. Let's test that out. Ah, we lost. 
Alright, so let's go back to our maze. The next thing we want to do is we want to say if Pikachu makes it all the way to the red square, then Pikachu won. So let's bring in another when green flag is clicked, another forever block, another if then block inside of the forever block. Let's grab the same touching color block from the sensing category. And I want to make sure that this shade of red is the same exact shade of red in my maze here. There. So now it's saying when green flag is clicked, always check that if Pikachu is touching this color of red, that means Pikachu won. And so we should switch the backdrop to say you win. Let's test that out. I'm just going to grab Pikachu and drop Pikachu over here. There. And finally, I want my game to restart anytime a user presses the green flag. So that means when someone presses the green flag, we need to switch the backdrop to be the maze. Okay? And that's all the code for today. Notice that when I press my green flag, I should be able to navigate Pikachu around the world. If I hit a black line at any point, I lose the game and I have to start over. And if Pikachu makes it all the way to the red square at the very end, that means that Pikachu won the game. Right? That's all for today. Once you're done with these three sections of code, please make sure that you are saving your work, you're signed in and that you're submitting it to the Maze Mini Project Studio for your class. Thank you for your hard work, and please take care.